Saint Nikolai's desire to become a missionary to Japan began during his time as a young seminarian in Russia. A few months before his graduation, he saw that the Russian embassy church in Japan was looking for a priest. He immediately sent in his application and got the position. After completing his studies, he was made a monk and a priest, and soon he set out on the long journey to Japan, but was stranded for several months due to poor weather conditions. During this time, he met the great missionary, Saint Innocent of Alaska, who became Saint Nikolai's mentor. When spring arrived, Saint Nikolai was able to resume his trip. Now, Christianity was actually outlawed in Japan. Being a Christian in Japan was very dangerous. Some believed that Christianity was destroying Japanese culture, and that other countries were using Christianity as a way of gaining political power. These fears led the Japanese government to ban Christianity. Even after hearing stories of Catholics being tortured and killed, Saint Nikolai still hoped that Orthodox Christianity would flourish in Japan. But nobody was converting, and Saint Nikolai felt like giving up and going back to Russia. Saint Innocent paid an unexpected visit to Japan. There, he spotted Saint Nikolai reading European books, which didn't make Saint Innocent very happy. Now, Saint Innocent was an expert when it came to missionary work and wanted to give Saint Nikolai some much needed advice. Saint Innocent told him that if he wanted to convert the Japanese people to orthodoxy, then he needed to familiarize himself with their language, their culture, and their history. Saint Nikolai clung to Saint Innocent's every word and began studying Japanese, Japanese culture, and Japanese history. He loved going to the Japanese school to learn the language. But the Japanese teachers didn't like how a Christian foreigner was studying at their school. They even put a sign outside the door that read, The bearded foreigner is not welcome. This saddened the saint very much, but that didn't stop him from continuing his Japanese studies. He was now determined more than ever to learn everything he could about the Japanese people. So Saint Nikolai made friends with the locals and studied their customs. He also learned all about the samurai. In Japan, the samurai were warriors, military nobility, and were highly respected. People would bow when they passed on the street. One of the samurai, named Takuma Sawabe, would visit the Russian embassy to teach one of the Russians how to fence. This is where Sawabe first saw Saint Nikolai. Sawabe didn't like Christians and thought that they should be killed. So one night, armed with a sword, Sawabe confronted the saint and was going to kill him. Saint Nikolai asked him why he would kill him without even giving him a chance to hear what he had to say. Sawabe thought about this and decided to give the saint a few minutes to tell him about Christianity. But as the saint talked, Sawabe's heart softened and he forgot about killing the saint. He even started asking Saint Nikolai more and more questions about orthodoxy. After that night, Sawabe began to study orthodox Christianity and became the first Japanese convert. Because Christianity was banned, Saint Nikolai had to baptize Sawabe in secret. They boarded up the windows and someone had to stand guard at the door. Sawabe loved orthodoxy and wanted everyone to know about what he had discovered. He began to preach and even converted some of his samurai friends. When the Japanese government found out that Sawabe was a Christian and was converting others to Christianity, they threw him and his friends in prison. But Sawabe was eventually released, and Christianity finally became legalized in Japan. Soon after this, Saint Nikolai made Sawabe an Orthodox priest. Saint Nikolai knew that the Japanese needed to be educated about the Orthodox faith. Education was a very important part of Saint Nikolai's life and his ministry. He started many schools in Japan, including a men's seminary and later a women's seminary. The students who graduated from his schools received a quality education, and some were even able to continue their studies at prestigious universities. When Saint Nikolai became a bishop, he knew that Japan needed a cathedral, so he went to work on building an enormous, beautiful cathedral in Tokyo. The cathedral became a landmark and became known as Nikolaido, which means Nikolai's house. The Japanese Orthodox Christians were happy that they finally had an Orthodox cathedral of their own, and even some curious non-Orthodox Japanese visited the cathedral to see the architecture, the icons, and listen to the Orthodox chanting. Their visits to the cathedral eventually led to some converting to the faith. Now, by this time, Saint Nikolai was an expert on Japanese culture and spoke Japanese fluently. 
When Saint Nicholas, the future Tsar of Russia, came to Japan for an official visit, Saint Nikolai served as a translator. Saint Nicholas's visit abruptly came to a halt when he was struck with a sword by a Japanese policeman and almost died. The Japanese government was terrified that the assassination attempt might start a war between Japan and Russia, and asked Saint Nikolai to come and try to fix the situation in some way. Saint Nikolai immediately went and stayed with the future Tsar until he recovered. Years later, a war eventually did break out between Russia and Japan. The Russians advised Saint Nikolai to leave Japan because he could be killed. But he couldn't leave his Japanese flock behind and decided to stay. Saint Nikolai was always very careful not to mix politics with religion and he struggled very much during this time. Saint Nikolai told the Japanese Orthodox Christians that they could support, fight, and pray for their own country. But he was a Russian patriot, and he didn't participate in the services where people prayed for a Japanese victory. He devoted much of his time meeting the spiritual needs of the Russian prisoners of war. Japan shocked the world and ended up winning the war. But many of the Japanese people didn't like the treaty that was signed. A violent mob gathered in Tokyo and made their way towards Nikolaido. They threatened to burn the cathedral down to the ground and kill Saint Nikolai. News of what was happening quickly spread. When the Emperor of Japan found out that the protesters were going to destroy the cathedral and harm Saint Nikolai, he sent the Japanese cavalry to stop the mob. The Japanese soldiers arrived and saved Nikolaido and Saint Nikolai. Soon after all these events, Saint Nikolai was made the Archbishop of Japan and was also awarded a medal by the Tsar of Russia for his missionary work. Saint Nikolai and his Japanese mission became famous throughout all of Japan and Russia. He converted over 30,000 Japanese to the Orthodox faith. But Saint Nikolai always glorified Christ for the success of the mission and remained humble. Saint Nikolai would always dedicate four hours a day to translating the Bible and other Orthodox Christian books into Japanese. It would sometimes take him five hours just to translate 15 verses. He did this up until his death in 1912. Orthodox Christians and non-Orthodox Christians came from all around the country to pay their last respects to the saint. The crowd of mourners stretched out for miles and actually caused traffic jams on the streets of Tokyo. Students stood outside their schools in rows and bowed as Saint Nikolai's coffin passed. The Emperor of Japan even sent a wreath, which was a high honor. Saint Nikolai is now known as the Enlightener of Japan and equal to the Apostles. Saint Nikolai once said, Although their outward appearances are different, all men are one. Where they live does not matter. All men are the same, and that they all possess a conscience, know what is good and what is bad, and they all have the potential for faith. Is not this a sign that all men are the children of God? It is our orthodox duty to lead those who are still lost and walking in darkness. This is the orthodoxy given to us all by Jesus Christ. Orthodoxy has existed since the birth of Christ to this day and has already spread to many countries. We know for sure as the sun rises and sets, the darkness will disappear when orthodoxy shines throughout the world.